Remote desktop software aren't anything new. They've been around for years. So when any viewer reached out to me asking me to check out their tool, I wasn't really sure what to do at first. But then I thought, wait a minute, what if we use this tool in an extremely real world sense? I have my main editing workstation here. What if I use any viewer on this and then control it from somewhere else? That way, if I'm say outside somewhere, I don't have to carry this bulky laptop with me. I can just carry a lightweight laptop or a tablet or something. All I have to do is leave this laptop running with the sleep function disabled. So that's what I did. I ran any viewer on this and I used this laptop from Asus, which is a super thin and light machine. It doesn't have any GPU or anything, so it's not powerful enough to easily edit 4K videos. I thought, let me see what the experience would be like. Now, right off the bat, based on the operating system you have, you will face some challenges. Like for example, the home edition of Windows, whether it's 10 or 11, doesn't have remote desktop. So I'm running Windows 11 home, so I didn't have remote desktop built in. So that would reduce your quality a little bit, I guess. But any viewer has one touch control, so it allows you to at least see and control the device. So it gives you a functionality that you otherwise would not have had. I use my mobile hotspot on my secondary laptop and where I live, my internet speed isn't anything great. The Wi-Fi is fairly decent to which my main PC was connected, but the 4G mobile data was really bad. I mean, this is a realistic scenario, right? When you're traveling, let's say, you may not have flawless internet connection everywhere. So that's what I meant. Like I really wanted to push this tool to the extreme and see what it does. Can it actually be used in real life or not? That's what I wanted to see. And well, I'll be honest, the experience wasn't amazing given the slow internet speed, but I was able to get my work done eventually. I could export an entire video by editing it on Premiere Pro running on my PC. All the while that thin and light laptop was running just fine because it's not doing any hard work. All the heavy lifting is done by the PC here in my room so I can just chill and let it do its thing. Yes, there was a lot of latency and key presses were kind of delayed. It was annoying. As I said, it wasn't amazing. These things really shine when you have good internet connection, but even when you don't, they are still functional. Even if it's a subpar experience, at least you will get your job done. You can still finish your work, right? That's still better than nothing. Now, I usually am not a person who travels a lot, so I wouldn't probably be in these remote areas with a laptop trying to do something. So you can install this on your Android phone or a cheap tablet that you may have and you can essentially use your PC like a touchscreen device. It'll be even more beneficial if you have an expensive machine that you don't really want to carry with you but you still may need it. So all you have to do is keep it running or at least you know keep it in a safe place and carry this cheap tablet with you so which you can remotely connect to this and easily use it. All I'm saying is there is a real use for having a tool like any viewer. And most of the time as long as you're in a good coverage area even mobile data nowadays is really fast. So even if you're on a 4G or 5G hotspot you will have really good internet anyways. As demonstrated by my horrible test at a really slow internet connection, you can still get your work done. I mean, it matters a lot. At the end of the day, it has to be practical. And I think this is. Even with a super slow internet connection, I never faced any disconnections. It didn't like stop working all of a sudden. It continued to do its job, even though rather slowly with a lot of delays. So the tool does perform well, even in suboptimal conditions. And that's, in my opinion, a good sign of quality. So I'll link their page in the description and I'll link this helpful article that they showed me. That's where I realized that, oh, I'm running home edition of Windows, which is why I don't have the remote desktop feature. And a few observations I had is that the inputs that you give from your remote device, they're pretty instantaneously reflected on the main device, but it doesn't immediately show up on the screen here. Like the video feed of the screen is delayed a little bit. So the action you're trying to perform may have already happened in the remote machine. You just didn't see it. So any viewer team, if you could optimize that somehow, I guess it'll be an even better experience experience, especially on slower connections. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks any viewer for letting me check out your tool. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or any concerns with this tool. Should I do any further tests? Leave your thoughts in the comments.